This is the desktop operating system market share worldwide. Now it's clear as day that if Windows didn't exist, macOS would be the most popular operating system in the world. Clearly, Windows currently has 72% market share and macOS 15.4. But as people jump from Windows over to macOS, they discover this whole new world. Maybe you bought yourself a new MacBook Air with 8GB of RAM. Please don't do that. Or maybe your older relative doesn't need their MacBook anymore and so it's now in your hands. You open it up and you see this. Mac OS. And if you've used only Windows before, this operating system is a complete disruption to the things you're used to. You're not able to snap Windows to the edges of your screen. When you close an app, it doesn't actually close. It stays open in the dock. What's the dock? Where's the start menu? How do you search things? In other words, you become a D-tier user. This is you. When you're just getting to know Mac OS. What different things do? What settings they are? How to increase or decrease the size of the dock? Maybe you Google, how do you quit apps on Mac? Or how do you install apps without the App Store? Then you realize that there are a bunch of things that you hate about macOS and you start getting this itching feeling that you want to change something. And thus, you move into C tier. This is when you get rid of things you don't like. You discover that there's an app called Rectangle that lets you snap windows to the edges of your screen. This tier is where you also start to see the difference between Windows and macOS and the good things that it has going for it. For example, you can select some text on your iPhone, hit copy, and then command V to paste that text in your computer. Pretty cool. You can also record something on your iPhone, hit the share button, airdrop, select your Mac, and then you'll receive that file just like that. No need to email it yourself. Or with this app, this is text edit or notepad on Mac. By default, when you open it, it will give you this new document window, which I forgot how to re-enable. But you don't like this. So you find a forum online that has the solution, paste this inside of your terminal, and now whenever you open text edit, it opens just like on Windows, immediately. Then you explore some settings. Maybe you want to decrease the width to a nicer number. This is also where the natural selection begins. In order to jump this gap, it's not so easy as jumping from C to D tier. You need to put in some effort. And so naturally, a lot of people don't make the jump and stay stuck in C tier, which is fine for them. But you're a little different. You have the energy to make the quantum leap. I have to make sure this joke makes sense. A quantum leap is when an orbiting electron in an atom makes jumps between energy levels. So it did make sense. Or if you don't like being in B tier, you can jump back to a lower energy state and release a photon. Stop. This is the tier where things get serious. You realize that a bunch of things that you do on Mac are pretty slow. You're pretty slow. Up until this point, you've been using your trackpad because there's so many cool gestures for it and it's convenient, or you even got yourself a mouse suited for Mac as a pledge to show your growing dedication to this operating system. <laughs> I'm using the Keychron M3. I like it, but I won't go into the details. So here are the details. It goes up to 135 Hz via Bluetooth and 1000 Hz via the dongle. The dongle is USB-C, so no adapter. It's white. Looks good with my Mac. Has a nice app where you can reprogram different keys. DPI and pulling rate switches at the bottom. Has slightly worse battery life than the Magic Mouse or MX Master, but the pros outweigh the cons by a mile. MX Master feels good, but the Bluetooth lag is unbearable if the mouse is not connected with the dongle. Magic Mouse? Not as horrible as I thought, but the sensor actually accuracy is quite poor. Also only 90 Hz pulling rate, which is super noticeable if you switch from it to the trackpad. As I said, let's not get into the details here. So up until this point, you mostly used your trackpad or your mouse. But other than typing, you didn't really explore what the keyboard has to offer. Well, in order to get faster, you realize that you can also use keyboard shortcuts. So you start learning a few. This is the point where you also start to care about your typing speed. You discover websites like Monkey Type that let you practice how fast you can type. You also discover that there are a few keyboard shortcuts that let you navigate text easier. For example, option delete deletes an entire word instead of one letter at a time. Option left jumps over the whole word instead of just using arrow keys and doing it one letter at a time. Option shift and an arrow key lets you highlight words or highlight entire sentences. In the beginning, you struggle with these keyboard shortcuts. They feel unfamiliar, hard to use. You think, why would I do that if I can just select it with my mouse? But over 
over time, as you use them more and more, you get more and more familiar with them. They get entrenched into your muscle memory. And now you can't stop using them. This is with everything, minimizing apps, maximizing them. You start being obsessed with keyboard shortcuts. You notice that you can do things much faster by using them. And this is where you enter the next stage. You quantum leap to A tier. You divorce your mouse. Even in your browser, you don't open new tabs like this like a pleb. You use command T to open a new tab, command W to close it. Instead of picking up your mouse and navigating to the link, you start using command L. You stop switching between different windows like this. You use command in the squiggly line. Everything in Mac OS becomes about productivity. You download hundreds of apps that shave 0.5 seconds off your workflow and take you 5 hours to learn the app. This is the tier where most Mac users go back to the B tier. They become complacent, forget some keyboard shortcuts. But as the circle of life continues, they come crawling back to A tier. And that's when they're ready to make the highest jump from A tier to S tier. This tier is not about more, it's about less, cutting back to the basics, uninstalling a bunch of apps you installed before, thinking you need them. This is about focusing on just doing the work you're here to do, no distractions. To you, macOS becomes a tool, a helper, not your main focus. You have bigger things to worry about. With that said, you're an expert. You can help your grandma. You know everything, how to use the terminal, how to password protect folders. You challenge the status quo. You don't put up with things you don't like anymore. You change them. You have an opinion. And that's when you discover Linux.